Synopsis shares jumping after that company reported better than estimated second quarter results and raised its full year guidance. Joining us now, Sassine Ghazi, Synopsis CEO. Sassine. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Great to see you, Julie. So obviously a lot of excitement around the broader chip space right now. You guys, of course, recently announced that you are working with NVIDIA, although you already had relationships with them. Um, what, what would you say was really the element or elements powering your numbers this quarter? Yeah, we're, st we're seeing strong performance across the portfolio. Remember, we have two parts of the portfolio. We have the design automation, which is the software used by the chip designers to design their chips. So when uh, Jensen talks about Synopsys as mission critical to their development, that's where they use our software to design the chip. The other part of our portfolio is design IP, which you need to think of it as part of the chip, like Lego blocks of the chip design that we have them prepackaged and again, used by either the chip uh, developers or the semiconductor industry or hyperscalers for that matter, that they're developing their own chips. They use the software and the IP from Synopsys. So the strength was driven by both segments. So see, it was interesting to hear Jensen sort of talk about the AI moment we find ourselves in and kind of just the language he used to seeing. He said, we are, the, the next industrial revolution has begun, he said. I'm just curious, is, if, is that how you see it, Sassine, that we really are in this sort of historic moment here? I do, I do. But I believe at the same time, we're in that early phase. That first phase is building out the infrastructure. Uh, the AI is driving a massive compute requirement, and you see most of these investments happening in data center for the obvious reasons. Then the second part is the networking to connect these data centers and these chips together. The second phase where you can call it the industrial revolution is gonna happen when all systems become intelligent systems, meaning your car become more intelligent, your home more intelligent, meaning connected uh, both from an inference and connected to the data center or on the edge uh, for compute. And Sassine, I know I ask you this every quarter, but we keep talking about sort of incrementally, when you say you're early in that AI revolution, especially as it pertains to you guys, what are we seeing that you can directly attribute revenue-wise to AI right now? And also, since shareholders just approved your acquisition of Ansys, assuming that still goes off, gets regulatory approval, how much will that grow the AI business as well? Yeah, so when I'm saying it's still early phase, I'm talking about the early phase of the overall market. When you look at the data center consumption of building out the compute, the intelligent system, et cetera. We, uh, as, as a software provider, we started selling our AI embedded in our software in 2020. So we've been four years into that cycle, and now we're able to communicate to our investor that it's contributing about 20% uplift in the domains where the customers are using AI for. So we're already seeing the benefit and a very rapid pace of adoption of the technology. But to give you a sense, we're only about 20%, now you can argue 20% is too high for, for AI, in terms of adoption, but it's it's growing uh, very nicely. And so we're already seeing that value already uh, from our software monetization using AI. And so see, on that question, the acquisition um, of Ansys, where are we there in the process to see in terms of regulatory approvals? So about four or five weeks after we announced the acquisition, we started the process. So uh, with the FTC, we're into phase two. Uh, with the EC, CMA, uh, we filed in April and we're going through the process. With China, the first phase or step was to communicate that we are below the merger uh, threshold, <clears throat> uh, the merger filing threshold. And uh, last week, China confirmed that we are below the threshold, but still express interest in uh, reviewing the deal. We're still targeting the first half of 25, and actually we're feeling that this process should be manageable to a positive close. Finally, Sassine, I wanted to ask you sort of about the, about the broader corporate spending environment right now, right? You wouldn't know that there were any questions about economic growth looking at your results, but I'm curious what you are hearing from clients, if there are any changes that they are making at the margin. 
So if you zoom out and look at market segments, uh, of course, anything related to AI, uh, our customers are investing and ramping up their R&D capability. The second segment that's actually fairly exciting, and we talked about it in our Q2 uh, report, is automotive. Uh, automotive, we have seen the push and the need uh, regardless if it's EV or not, but to make the car more autonomous, meaning more uh, infotainment, ADAS type of application inside the car that requires more sophisticated chips. The third market that we're seeing that early uh, interest in uh, going deeper into electronics is anything industrial, to go back to a, a more intelligent industrial uh, manufacturing and systems. Now, there is a talk, but I'll, I'll, I'll contribute it to be more four or five years out, is anything around life sciences. So that's where we're seeing the, the, the general landscape. And of course, anything hyperscale, um, it's, it's driving significant growth due to the build out of uh, AI. So, Sassine, it was great to have you on the show today. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.